side band. We don't see that all that often, but of course, red side, blue side bands have been changed up uh, just a touch as we have gone from 7.2 to 7.3. So Shen being banned away, as you said, Fnatic Academy, now they don't really have to ban the Rengar and the Camille, but I mean, Amazing doesn't really play a lot of Rengar. I wonder, maybe we'll see if he's picked it up in the last couple of weeks. Of course, haven't seen him in a few weeks. And with a Graves ban, yeah, well, I can understand that Ivan as a first pick. If if Fnatic Academy want to play, we did see a game of him. Yeah, actually, the last game Amazing played on the Fnatic lane. Yeah, and he can work out really well. Uh, Fnatic seems to have an affinity towards that Ivan as well. We saw Broxer playing it quite a few times in week one. Varus is the ban here from Misfits Academy. Decide they don't want to give that across towards Fnatic. I'm actually surprised by that because Yuki, when he plays Varus, has almost twice as much damage as when he plays any other AD carry. That's fair, but obviously with the first pick available for Fnatic Academy, you can't really let that through. It's very, very strong. So we'll likely see priority on Jin on the first rotation. Camille or Rengar are getting through here. Yeah. I think at this point, I wouldn't want to give Kigis Camille. I'd be a little more happy to give Rengar Or Jace over, as or well, Jace. though. So decide. Huh. Now, Fnatic did get Camille last week and didn't did. do too well with it. It was Zergoth rather than Kikis, and actually they decided to take the Rengar instead. Taking it away from Pride Stalker, firstly, who is known as a Rengar Very player, true. but even when he played Rengar last week, didn't have the best of times. No, I wasn't particularly impressed by uh, his performance last week on Rengar. So now, obviously, Jace, uh, Jin gets picked up here by Misfits Academy. We've got the Lulu available that they have uh, you know, prioritized fairly heavily. A lot of teams in Challenger have. So wouldn't be surprised to see it in this first phase of the picks. Camille still on the cards yeah. as well. Mid lane is probably going to be a little bit easier for these guys. No no real power picks. Rise still there if Niski does want That's to take true. that. So I think taking a jungler here makes a little bit of sense, gives you a counter pick, but you do leave the Camille and the Rise up for Fnatic. Exactly, and I think Fnatic, they, the Rise is going to be there for Niski surely, otherwise it will get banned away. I actually think that they could have turned this around slightly by leaving Kha'Zix as their pick on this part of the rotation. They could have taken the Lulu. But I now Misfits Academy, okay, I see why they didn't do that. Because if they're giving the Camille, you want to pick up the good matchup into it. You don't want to blind pick something like a Poppy if you don't know the Camille is there. So actually thinking about like the next step of this is Pride Stalker takes the safe jungler for himself. They get a good ish matchup against the Camille. Otherwise, it would have got banned away with Shen Ban. You've got to pick another tank. Yeah, uh, there's a few good matches we've seen for Camille. Of course, we're on 7.3, so she has received a slew of nerfs. Still <laughs> very powerful. Like, some people say Fiora and Jax are really strong into her because you trade into her pretty well. And then some people say you should play tanks into her because you just sustain through any damage she can do. Yeah, it, it's that weird point where Camille wants to be a split pusher and a team fighter and somewhere in the middle yeah. um, where she's not the best at either, so if you pick one of the things, then you'll be better than her at that. But we'll see the Camille Poppy matchup. Now the focus goes back on to the AD carries like game one. We saw the Ash ban uh, we saw the Ash come out because Sivir was banned away. We'll see whether Misfits continue that one as well. We already know they've got the Jin locked in. It's Fnatic seemed pretty comfortable with that Ash though. They knew how to yep. use it. You know, it's something we've seen around the competitive scene for a long time. Once again they ban out the Tom Kench. Would not be surprised at all if this is a Thresh ban as well. Hexec Ultimatum and the jump in from that Rengar. Very good at isolating a single member. Yeah, very, very good at isolating uh, single members. <laughs> Remember, we had last week a uh, Tom Kench uh, kind of carry the, uh, the the target out. I think that was a yeah. Schalke game. Uh, it was, uh, he carried Kha'Zix out. Yeah. Eight Lulex in the Hexec Ultimatum, <laughs> spat him out. Lulex was like, what's going on? And then he had to devour him huh. once again. But Did we actually have a, a no Looks like we had a miss ban, yeah. From Misfits Academy. So that's going to allow the Civet through. Yeah, yeah, that seems very odd to it. me. Because it, it, like Misfits Academy there would have wanted the Civet ban. No Thresh ban here. Instead, it's a Syndra taking that away from Coscu. Yeah. So now Misfits top laner and their support left to pick. Well, at this point, Ryze is available for either team. Corky is available for mid lane as well. Oriana is up. So both teams have the pick of that. Unless Niski wants to run Camille, but we just spent a few minutes talking about how Niski is more of a passive, you know, mid, -laner, passive yeah. mid laner. I don't really expect him to do the caps thing and just maybe, go, he, maybe Camille he's Camille been mid. training under caps. You know, he maybe. is an academy. He's a student of the caps school <laughs> of mid lane. 
is going to be the severe pick that we talked about for Mr. Rollers. And now we will see that mid laner locked in for Fnatic Academy. I mean, there's a very, very rare option that Camille goes like jungle and you see Rengar top lane as well, but ah, it's incredibly rare. No, it's not going to happen. We haven't seen Rengar top lane since Mima. I don't think we've Super seen. Hot crew days. Have we seen Camille jungle since uh, Challenge Series like qualifications? Taiki uh, played it. Not in Europe, okay. we haven't. I, I wouldn't go so far as to say it hasn't happened. Um, so, with this composition, this is reminiscent of what PSG were doing with the Rise, the Sive, very strong late game scaling. And then you've got a Rengar and a Camille for the early game portion. So, interested to see how Fnatic Academy play the early game on the top side again. It's top side focus for Fnatic Academy in the early game. Once again, Misfits now looking for a scaling mid laner. I prefer this, I think. Q, we've seen a lot from his Cassiopeia over the years here in Challenger. That we have can work out incredibly well. I, I really want to look at that top lane though, the Poppy. Pretty hard to dive, especially since Kickers will probably be pushing him in with the Tactical Sweep. It's going to be a very interesting matchup in that top side because Amazing is going to focus there. And Pride Stalker on this aggressive jungler as well will have the ability to counter gank. I feel like the difficulty Misfits Academy have here is there's no real initiation like they've got a flank opportunity from poppy where if you get the entrance from the side of a team fight theoretically that works very well for you but look at it you've got Sivir to disengage you've got rise with the portal to get yourself out you've got lulu to protect whoever poppy jumps on and then camille jumps in rengar jumps in everybody kind of engages there's slight problems if this goes past like 35 minutes uh, because slight. that, <laughs> that Sivir and that Rise, they're going to start taking over. I think as well, like we always talk about pushing lanes and if you look across these lanes, no one, no lane really pushes in favor of Misfits Academy. I mean, Jin Karma has okay push, but into Sivir Lulu, you're going to struggle. Camille pushes the Poppy back. You're going to see Rise pushing the uh, Cassio back to some degree, although that's relatively even, which means River Control all goes across towards that Rengar and it allows Amazing a much larger portion of the map to make plays on than Pride Stalker will have. That's very true. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what Amazing can do in this game. We saw in the last game him look very, very convincing on that Lee Sin. We know it's a, a bit of a pocket pick for him early on. Um, so we'll see whether he can have the same kind of impact. Well, we are about to get on to Summoner's Rift for Game 2 here. If you think Fnatic are going to take it 2-0, tweet at us with hashtag FNAWIN. If you think Misfits are going to equalize the series at 1-1, one one, hashtag MFA win. And make sure you put that hashtag EUCS there as well to make sure that we see that you're tweeting at us. But straight on to the Summoner's Rift. Game 2 here. Fnatic need a win. Misfits, of course, very much want to tie this one up because next week they face against Schalke 04, who have let yet to lose a match. Yeah, you have to kind of... Uh fear that you end up with null points ah, coming ah, out of that ah, one ah, when, you, ah, when ah, you face ah, the top. Ah, okay, ah, it wasn't that funny. All right, thanks. Ah, don't pity laugh me. I've been here for four <laughs> weeks. I've heard that joke many times. I know, but maybe we've got new viewers that haven't That's heard true. the terrible no, humor that uh, Fedius and I bring out. Vendius, you mean? <laughs> ah. Anyway, <laughs> top lane is the focus. We can see both junglers setting up towards the top side of the map as well. It looks like it's going to be a blue start for Amazing, red start for Pride Stalker. This is similar to what we saw last game. Similar to what we saw last game. Uh, we'll see whether Amazing gets up into top lane like last game. Um, obviously started the snowball fairly heavily with two ganks into top lane on Jizu's Maokai. Punished him very heavily. Last week, though, we saw... Almost exactly the same combination. So it was actually at least instead of a Rengar jungle, actually he's going to go red buff start. So this allows him to get towards top a little bit quicker. But it was at least Camille for Fnatic Academy. It was Dan and Zergoth. And even though they got first blood against Shalka Nulfir, they weren't able to snowball it. This is one thing we've seen actually go fairly wrong. I like that Coscu's looking to help out here. We've seen Raptors start a couple of times. Um, and it was Tabasco last week that started on Raptors as Kha'Zix and really heavily failed. You can see Pride Stalker's done that start now on the top side and is very healthy in comparison. So we started to see a lot of the junglers start on Raptors, get a little bit of health back as they go over to red with that smite. Just variations that we continually see throughout the jungle. People optimizing paths, trying to deceive their opposition as well. Koskyu did spot out, amazing as you say. I saw that he was starting down towards that bottom side of the map. So. I think both teams really know where the enemy jungler is. Pride Stalker, because, you know, Jisoo was around there anyway. Fnatic will have a, a little bit of an awareness that Pride Stalker is probably now 
going around to his bottom side, although they did just ping red buff, so it might be they don't have a clue where the Karzix is sneaking. Yeah, they didn't have a, a full read on it early on. Now I'm, I'm wondering, we've got the push in for Misfits Academy on the bot side. They hit level two early. Mr. Rallis and Clay still not level two. Heavy trade mid lane, that's an exhaust coming out. Ghost used as, oh no, sorry, it's just exhaust, just the movement speed coming out from the noxious blasts from COSQ. No one's got ghosts, so it's be very difficult to use that in the mid lane. A double exhaust, well, you are against like Camille, Rengar on one side, and then Kha'Zix on the other and uh, that Cassiopeia, so trying to just deny some of the presence later on in the game. And as well with the ghost nerfs that we saw coming in, it's not taking quite as often on mid laners these days. Yep. Yep, just more difficult, a little bit slower acceleration. Feels more like one of those, that, you know, shopping scooters than a Ferrari these days. Reminds me of the Crazy Frog song. No, no please, me. no, no, yeah. we don't <laughs> need to go back We're not gonna do it. Like, we We're talked earlier about it. showing age, and I think that would really <laughs> do it. Jisoo. Uh, Jisoo. Ooh, that's such a heavy trade out from Kikis against his Poppy. Already, again, very similar to game one. Burned through all of the health potions, and now Amazing is coming up to the top side. Jisoo has spotted him out under tower on that Krugs. Right, Stork is on the opposite side of the map, which does have a ward. Jisoo's got to be careful. Sweeps in. Jisoo does still have that steadfast presence, so can stop the jump in from Amazing, but needs to be cautious about how he plays this. And Kikis is continually harassing and pushing this lane. It's going to be hard for Jisoo to farm underneath the turret, so he will lose some farm, but the dive is nigh on impossible for Fnatic Academy. Well, with the minions it was, but now there aren't many. Oh, Amazing jumps in. Jisoo flashes away. Kikis tries to get in. Steadfast Presence locks him under tower, but he hasn't taken aggro. He gets the adaptive defenses, but he doesn't get out alive. One for one trade in the top lane. It looked like Kikis got blocked under tower for a second and had to flash right on top of Jisoo. Bot lane, there is a trade in response, but I think Fnatic Academy were looking to get out of that, obviously without burning anything, but Kikis had to reach just further to get that kill. And actually, uh, starting Tiamat, that's an interesting one. We've seen a lot of Sheen starts against tanks. This is all about Kikis wanting to just push for the, as fast as he can. Just deny that Poppy as much experience, as, she, well, as much gold as you can underneath the tower. But Tiamat, Sheen, it's, it's a debate at the moment. You don't see enough Camille really to have the numbers on which one is a more effective start. As you say, the harass potential from the Sheen is a little bit more impactful. Let's have another look at this dive because Steadfast Presence does a lot of work. Yeah, and I want to see exactly how much of this his kick is needing to flash because look, he walks forward. Ah, oh, he hook shots onto the tower and doesn't get the, the, yeah. uh, the angle on it. Yeah. So he's he, there, he hook shots onto the tower and yeah. waits until that Steadfast Presence is down or until he thinks it's mm -hmm. going to go down, tries to jump in, gets caught out because the Steadfast Presence still isn't down, yep. then has to burn his flash, which takes him out. Yeah, just the, the initial cast on uh, Hookshot was very, yeah, very small. Holding so. onto the tower. <laughs> it's like the world's smallest like uh, bat zip line kind of thing at that point. But uh, Kigis... Grapple gun? Grapple that gun. That's, that's what, what it is. It? Zip line. What am I talking about? Not a DC You fan. could use I'm it for sorry. a zip line, though, if you want it. Yeah from turret to turret, but not going to do that for the moment. Ever so slightly ahead in that top lane, but I think Jisoo will be incredibly happy that he's gone back and got a chain vest for himself. Mid lane, both the tiers have started stacking up as well for CosQ and Niski, so they're looking to scale towards these late game carries. Uh oh, oh. That's <laughs> not what you That wasn't do. what you were looking for. It's one of those ones where, so CosQ's just throwing that out. Um, because he's waiting for Niski to just turn into it. Yeah. If Niski turns into that, Koski basically wins the lane for the next couple of minutes because he just chunks him down, forces him back, and, and basically pushes and gets the presence. And it's the path thing as well. Niski yeah. like, continuously has been running away, stepping back to take a minion, running away, stepping back to take a minion. So Koski, deceived by that, thought he could go in. Jump in again. here by Kikis. He's going to get knocked back into the wall. His amazing Hexec Ultimatum comes down. An amazing tanks up the tower. The invincibility frames on that Hextech Ultimatum yep. allow Kikis to get the kill. Getting that reset under the tower. Resets the aggro. Easy kill onto Jizu. No flash was available for either one, and they knew that all they had to do was start out with the tank. Koski and Pride Stalker, are they expecting Who are they Niski waiting to, for here? That's what I'm going to say. Are they expecting Niski to be recalling like on his inner tower or something? So yeah. uh, I was about to praise them because I thought they were doing what Fnatic did in the last game, which is as soon as you see two members top, you get in, you get deep vision, right. and you can track the enemy jungler. But that wasn't what they were doing at all. Were they like waiting for Amazing? Because yeah. he was topside. Maybe they were waiting for Niski. Maybe. Thinking oh, Niski would come around. <gasps> 
Amazing doesn't have his ultimate because it wasn't available from the last yeah. uh, attempt on top. If Amazing had had his ultimate, Pride Stalker was dead. Like, 100% dead. Once again, we see Pride Stalker having a very slow early game, and this doesn't tend to work out well for Misfits Academy. They tend to need Pride Stalker to kick off to get some damage down. However, Clyde's got caught out here by Yuki and Dreams. Mr. Rala steps forward, tries to keep his Lulu a little bit safer. We'll just back away for the moment. Both these AD carries very equal in the bottom lane at the time being. Kicker still has his teleport available. Haven't used the teleport advantage once. Uh, has Sheen now, and Jesus is going to try and trade into him. Kicker's continuing the trade, dodges the keeper's verdict with the whole wall, wall shot. Really in the nice. Grapple. That's a really strong play. Really nice little dodge out there. Kikis, I mean, if he hook shots in, maybe gets the uh, damage reduction. Oh, look at Niski. Niski's roaming up. Pride Stalker did ping top side as well. Jesus pushed so far up because he didn't have a read on exactly where Kikis was. Now Kikis. Dashes forward, they sense something is up. Here comes Rise. Niski's warping in, he gets the ward down, gets the prison down, and Jisoo is in through a world of hurt. Tries to flash in, hammer shot down, Ooh, he gets he the him. kill, and he gets the shield out of it as well. I'm not sure he's going to survive for long, but he'll be very happy to make it a one for one. Ah, that was a little messy out of Kikis, sticking around, thought he could get the trade, and then ended up trading on the Q pad that uh, Jisoo had laid down. Ah, uh, Kikis really shouldn't have died. That that was that should have been a clean one for nothing in favor of Fnatic Academy. Now amazing sticking around topside. He's gonna thrill off the hunt away, jump back in. Prize Stalker there, amazing looking for the stacks, goes back towards the tower, has to dodge. Battle roar underneath the turret, takes the aggro. Kick is now in for a world of pain. Prize Stalker jumped on. Kick is just can't get the kill. Tactical sweep will take him down. Now he needs to get away from Jisoo, who continues the chase. Flash. Kikis survives. Kikis survives, and now he's going to take out the ward, looking for just that hook shot exit. And that was very messy out of Amazing, sticking around topside, trying to take a one-for-one -one trade against the Kha'Zix. Not exactly something you ever really want to do. And this is where this whole play started. Realm Warp was channeling through. Kikis stays in this fight for way longer than he should have. Tries to hook shot out, gets pushed right back against that wall and taken out. Niski then is able to finish off the kill with Amazing's help. Then Amazing pushes the lane out and then decides to trade against Pride Stalker. So like here, he's out. He, he's out, he could have jumped out. He thinks he has the damage and thinks he's not isolated. That's why Amazing's moving back towards the tower is because he doesn't want to isolate himself, but doesn't realize he's still got tower aggro because I believe Red Buff actually procced on Pride Stalker and forced the tick damage. And that I think it was the battle roar actually that did it. Yeah, I'm not sure if Amazing well had, the, uh, had the red buff. So he was the cause of his own demise there. But we talked about it in game one. Kikis and Amazing sometimes overextend a little bit. And there Kikis was staying around to try and get an assist. Then went very aggressive for the, for the second player. Had to end up burning his flash. Did get out. And flash on Camille is not too impactful because you have the hook <laughs> shot and the wall yeah. jump to get away. Because you got like 2,000 units of range of escape. I played Camille on Earth the other day. Did not go well for me. I, I, I don't have the mechanical intensity that you need to play her. It feels like that would be, you know, okay, we're going to show our age again. Did you ever watch Gladiators Yes, of on course TV? I did. Oh, of course you did. Okay, you know with the rings where yes. they had to like swing? That's what playing Camille like mon in monkey Aura. ring it across. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like the entire rift. <laughs> you must just The entire rift's around. an obstacle course for you. <laughs> it's the same as Talon, just continually jumping over all the walls. Bryce Stalker here going to get the Cloud Drake. Or look for it at least. Amazing did spot out the fact there was a ward and Bryce Stalker decides he doesn't want to go too much for that pressure at the time being. Fnatic are looking for it themselves, though. You can see they're clearing out a little bit of vision. Just setting wards around. Uh, they know that they've got enough pressure on the top side with Kikis being ahead, despite it not quite looking so straightforward as the last game. It um, is difficult to trade into some of Poppy's damage. You can see Kikis just being cautious of not going into a wall. I think the thing is as well, Ninja Tarbis actually can do a lot of work for Poppy yeah, look in this how match. Much work like, this is Hexac doing. Ultimatum comes down, Kick is continually trying to trade, tactical sweep, but Jisoo's just like hammer shock after hammer shock. Thank you very much, Kick is adapted, defenses might keep him alive. It doesn't, and Jisoo survives as well. Another trade that Fnatic Academy did not need to take. Look at the level disparity between Kikis and Jisoo. Level eight to level 10. 
what was a very heavy snowball in the first game going in Fnatic's favor has turned around now as they've completely misread this Koscu. Koscu does get the Petrifying Gaze down. Well Warp in by Niski. The curtain call opens as Yuki looks for some snipes. Dreams going low and he'll get caught out by Fnatic as well. They'll get two kills. They didn't get the Drake. And they lost kickers in the top lane. They need to push out bot side and try and get that tower in response, though. They need to get something to accentuate this lead. They have got the kill lead. They've had the CS lead uh, for a moment or two in some of their lanes, and that's where the the lead, the gold lead they have right now, nearly 2,000, is coming from. It's some, some sense of the kills they got on Niski earlier. Hikus is realizing he can't just straight up trade at the moment with Jisoo. He's now gone for a Vampiric Scepter to try and get a little bit more sustained. Of course, you get some from the Tactical Sweep as well. This is going to be first tower for Fnatic Academy. And this tower going down means actually Misfits have never got a first tower in any of their first eight games in the Challenger Series. That is not a good stat no. to have. That uh, really works against you. Because, as you said, Kikis doesn't have any real sense of sustain coming through here. Tried with those uh, defenses to keep himself alive, but Jisoo walks out of there in enough time. And this was the response on the bot side from Fnatic. Pop the Rengar ultimate and start running in. And they actually get onto Koscu, I believe it is. They get the exhaust down and burst him out. They attempt to steal the dragon, but that's not really what they're looking for here. Amazing jumps right onto Koscu. They get the knock up with the wild growth. And it's an easy first kill in this exchange. They continue and force Yuki to stop his ultimate because they're getting way too close. And then they get the tower out of it as yep. well, which gives them a substantial gold lead. 3,000 ahead, only 14 minutes in. Kick is continually trying to trade. Actually puts the Hexagold and Matum down. He wants this. He's two levels behind this. Niski, Bright Stalker catches him out with the Void Assault, though. And Niski realizes he doesn't want this fight. Tactical Sweep once again. Knock up onto Niski. He's isolated. And Pride Stalker sinks down at the claws. Fnatic Academy, you know, this game, they still have a, about the same lead as they did in the last one, but it is not the same playstyle. style. Rales. with the flank. Rales has to flash away. Amazing. Jay onto Dreams will get the kill, though. And now Yuki is caught in a bad situation. Amazing. Trying to catch up. I keep saying Amazing Jay. I'm I know. I'm like, I'm we're casting LPL. It's just amazing. The spirit of Pulse is still an EU challenger. Oh, oh petrifying gaze onto Amazing. Dodge that, says Kodsku. He chases down. He sticks the fangs in. And he gets one. He's looking for two as Clyde has to flash away. And this has been a very back and forth game. Every kill Fnatic have had has been somewhat to do with Amazing so far on this Rengar. One, two, and six, but they have dropped a lot of kills in exchange from it. They still have the gold lead and the advantage, but that top tower fell for Misfits Academy. And this is another time in Challenger where we're seeing a team picking up Camille on the blue side and not doing very well because they feel forced to pick it in the draft at that point. This was second rotation, though. Why has it done so badly, though? Because we said if Amazing puts pressure up towards that top side, if they get early kills, they can snowball this Camille. And that's what happened. And then it just turned on its head and Jisoo started being able to 1v1. Yeah, a lot of it is because Poppy is kind of not just a containment match, but it, it seems to be more of a skill match where if you do get ahead, you have enough damage despite building full tank to be able to out-trade against Kikis. You outlast a lot of the damage that comes through. So the burst that comes from building Sheen and looking for Triforce doesn't really have any impact in the laning phase. Now, what I want to see is how does this matchup play when we go later, when Camille is 1v1 with the Triforce, with the Ravenous Hydra, with this extra itemization. Can the Poppy still take that trade? We'll find out. Especially with a team that can come from nowhere for the rest of Fnatic Academy. You've got yeah. Thrill of the Hunt, you've got Realm Warp, you've got On the Hunt coming out from Sivir as well. So much mobility and so much speed for Fnatic Academy to collapse on a single member of the Misfits. And talking about oh. collapsing onto Koscu, dodges it out. Koscu's just dead. Amazing takes the kill. Same combo again. Now topside, Jizu's looking for Kikis once again. Doesn't get the slow and Kikis will jump away. I think that steadfast presence really makes this matchup. If it's down, Kikis can engage. If it's up, there's not really much he can do. Yeah, denies a lot of that utility and the mobility that Kikis wants to bring. Now Fnatic Academy pushing onto the tower again. Pride Stalker and Dreams are here, but they've already lost half of that tower health. Uh, a bit more than half now yeah, as well gonna as go Fnatic down. are going to be able to take it. Second tower of the game in the bottom lane for them. They kept Mr. Rales in the mid lane just to clear it out. And he'll retreat to make sure he's not caught out by Jisoo. 
despite it looking rough around the edges, Fnatic Academy are starting to take full control of this game. They've got Civic clearing and pushing mid lane. Now Yuki wants to try and look for this, but are they overextending? Amazing doesn't have his ultimate available yet. Uh, I'm going to double check when it's available since we have a little bit of an error on the spectator. 50 seconds until that is available. Not too long whatsoever. Drake is up in about that time as well, which allows them to set up once again for perhaps a flank onto Misfits Academy, who you must say have played this early game a lot better. They've been able to capitalize on the mistakes Fnatic Academy have been making, and they have their Poppy scaling up. And Poppy, when she gets late game, especially considering it looks like she's either building an Iceborne Gauntlet or a Frozen Heart, mm -hmm. is going to be very difficult to deal with. Yeah, we've seen a lot of that Iceborne Gauntlet do a lot of work. I feel like Jisoo and Pride Stalk have done a decent job this game. Um, still, like, Husky, I, we've seen what he's been attempting to do. He's been just slower on the roams, though. Didn't get the trades in lane that he was really looking for. And I think those are kind of split-second plays that, if they go the other way, make him look incredible, yeah. right? If you get that trade in the lane, if you lock them down, if you roam just that bit earlier and get to the fight and have kind of, kind of presence, that's where you look great. But look, Fnatic Academy again are faster on the play. They're on the inner tower already. They've just taken two towers down very quickly. They're bringing everyone up as well. They might just go for the complete push. Koskyu and Pride Stalk are still in the bottom lane and Fnatic Academy say, okay, we'll just go for your top lane inhibitor tower. They have a lot of damage. You have to remember if Amazing is there with any other member, they take towers incredibly quickly. They're just gonna push in. This is gonna be the inhibitor tower going low. Amazing Keepers wants. verdict Ooh. knocks out Niski, but Fnatic just go for the turret. Amazing there as the front line. Klein knocked back. The turret will fall. However, Misfit still going in further. Jisoo called out Hexagold and made him onto Yuki. Diving in. Kick is trying to sweep away the members of Misfits, and Jisoo is the first to get pushed under the rug. Now the inhibitor tower, the target, but Koskyu is still there. He's got bot lane inhibitor tower alongside Bryce Stalker. Kikis almost dies. They get the inhibitor, but I don't think they get back in time to stop Misfits. And Misfits with only two members get an inhibitor and get out. Inhib for inhib trade, very messy. And I think Misfits will actually be fairly happy with that trade. No way should they have been in a position to get an inhibitor at 19 minutes, but Fnatic Academy just couldn't quite push fast enough. Yes, Fnatic Academy got a kill on that exchange, but so did Misfits. Jisoo died, Clyde died, and now Misfits Academy gonna get a Cloud Drake from it. This is actually a, a lot of gold generation that accelerates them to a two item gin point. We're closer to that Iceborne Gauntlet. Coscue picks up more as well, and they now have pressure on the bot side, which opens up some of that Baron control for Misfits Academy. Yeah, especially at 20 minutes, just about to hit the clock, you've got Karzix for the isolation damage. You've got Cassio there as well, who goes through Baron in a heartbeat. This opens up so much of the map for Misfits Academy and off what looked like a bad trade. They're gonna get a lot. Niski caught out slightly. Dreams is low. Koskyu chasing in. Niski does just speed his way away. Noxious Blast lands though, and there's the exhaust. Cly onto Pride Stalker off towards the side. Teleport in by Kickers as Amazing is gonna leap his way straight onto the Kha'Zix. He wins the hunt. He takes down two, and there's another kill for Fnatic. They've collapsed all onto Misfits. Jisoo gets one. He's quite tanky still. He might be able to knock up Vralis. Koskyu trying to keep himself alive off towards the side. Jisoo almost goes down, and Fnatic Academy are gonna continue the chase Comes in. My Asthma, not enough. They don't aggro Baron either, which means Misfits do keep two members alive. They're going to lose their mid lane tower for it. Yeah, they're going to lose mid tower for it. Kikis is still hunting around. They were waiting to see where Poppy was coming back through. And despite Misfits Academy being happy with the inhibitor trade, we can't forget Fnatic Academy was still the team in the lead, still the team wanting to force fights. Kikis wants to try and trade into Jisoo, but cannot afford to dive right into Koskyu. They're going to forego this fight and back away. Misfits are just continually like running around, being like, yeah, we can take you, we can take the fight. But Not quite deciding to do it. Hang on, Medic, here's where the bot lane inhibitor is so influential, because look at that big wave stacking up there. Now Misfits Academy can look for the Baron. There's no teleport on Fnatic. Realm Warp is up, but Fnatic have to commit to denying this. The Baron it's is going to be so gone. incredibly it's low. It's taken, Misfits. Sneak the Baron right under Fnatic Academy's noses. And even though Fnatic Academy would have thought they won the fight, Dream's actually going to get caught out in the Baron pit. Fnatic take him down. But that means that now there is a Baron on four members of Misfits Academy, and they close that gold gap a little bit. Uh, Dream's the casualty for the greater good in a lot of these fights. So Fnatic Academy, they took this trade and were able to turn it back around. Watch how the, the fight ends, though. So Kikis jumps into the fight, very convincing amount of damage, just takes everybody down with Amazing. So difficult 
for Misfits Academy to survive through this, but look, Cly ends up dying. And with just Jisoo and Koskyu, they slow Fnatic Academy for long enough, because look at the low health bars. There's no real way uh, of Kikis closing the gap here. Good use of the Blast Cone to get Jisoo over the wall. Kikis clearly didn't have Hookshot available at that point and never used the Hextech Ultimatum yeah. in that fight. Didn't find the target he was looking for, and oh, Pride Stalker. He's going to get Rune prisoned. He's going to be able to jump away, though, with the Void. Assault doesn't escape. Niski takes him out. Amazing Ooh. with a massive leap across the wall. Tries to get onto Dreams, but now Misfits Academy can open up the big guns. Amazing dead. Fly almost sniped away as well, does just survive a one-for-one -one trade, jungle after jungle. And jungle after jungle, but the Baron's already down, and that means Misfits Academy still have it on three members. Fnatic still looking like they want to fight, gotta keep our eyes on bot lane, that inhibitor has not respawned yet. So it means every time Fnatic want to try and push out, it's difficult not to deal with bot, because they'll start losing Nexus Towers, there has been some damage dealt to that Nexus Tower already, about a third of the health has disappeared, and Kikis has had to recall and go down there to save it. Now, in Picked and Bands, we talked about the power of this Fnatic composition later on in the game. You know, you said that Camille was there early game, then Rise and Sivir would start to take over as we got later on. Yep. Sivir is at two full items, Essence Reaver, Phantom Dancer, Rise has got a fully stacked Rod of Ages, a Morello, and that stacking up tier. Is this the point where that Rise and Sivir really come online, or do they need a little bit more? Sivir needs a little more time. I mean, still does have good damage in the fights. We've seen Rales picking up a few kills and dealing damage with the Ricochet, but here's another fight. GC1 kick is it's a 1v1. The Hexa go to make him comes down, and Fnatic try and collapse onto the Poppy. They'll take him out. And now Misfits on the back foot because Amazing comes in with a flank. Yuki dead. Dreams chased out by Amazing as well. The Realm Warp will bring three members of Fnatic forward. And they're going to continue the chase onto Misfits. Cos Q tries to turn it back around. Cannot do it. Misfits skitter. Skitter? Scutter the way away. Where was Cos Q in that exchange? Why was Misfits Academy pushing in the bot side of the jungle? As, again, look at the... Okay, Inhib's come up. Kigis is recalled, trying to defend, but now Fnatic Academy are looking to push through. Why were Misfits Academy making a play in bot jungle with their mid laner so far away? And we talk about Baron power plays. When Misfits took that Baron, they were 4,000 gold behind. They are now 5,000 gold behind while they've had a Baron buff. Yeah, they couldn't really move out. So it all started with Pride Stalker getting caught out on this exchange. This is where Kikis went down. Amazing. Had so much damage. This was the fight before the one we just saw. Yeah. This is the one where it was jungler for jungler trade. And then from there, we saw another trade later on. That we did, you can see Kikis coming up to try and join the fight once again. He's still in that bottom lane, has the teleport up now. Ravenous Hydra and T uh, Tri Trinity Force completed. So he's starting to get that uh, later game Camille that we talked about earlier on. Jisoo there though with the Iceborne Gauntlet and Misfits Academy are in the middle lane looking for this team coming in behind tower. them. Kick is looking for the flank, Rengar but he's going to flank straight into four members. Rengar ult is down as well. Pride Stalker perhaps the one to catch. Fnatic collapsing in for four different sides, and they'll take out one. Pride Stalker caught away to the side as well. Ooh. He's dead. Petrifying gaze, though, from Koskyu exhausted straight away. Misfits Academy running for the hills, but I'm not sure they get away from the Fnatic professorial squad. Misfits Academy, the students. Fnatic Academy, the teachers, and they're teaching them how to get kills. Fnatic Academy with three kills on the board looking perhaps for the second inhibitor of the game that top inhibitor is easy target in the next phase of this play yuki will be up in enough time pride stalker will be able to defend as well so it won't be critical damage in the sense of a game ending push but fanatic academy have a good setup here jisoo wants to go in there's the inhibitor going down jisoo knocks cly into the wall the hammer shot down as well redemption comes out whisper looking for a kill gets onto niski gets onto rala spell shield up though they don't get top lane inhibitor alongside but they that. they will get an Infernal Drake in exchange. Pride Stalker is going to go down and try and stop them. So Fnatic Academy, every time they inch closer to getting objectives, they are somewhat halted by Misfits Academy. 
You can see Mr. Wallace's his decision making there. He's like, oh yeah, we've got this guy. He's Infernal Drake, chucks a boomerang out. Oh wait, teleporting by Jisoo. Nope, thank you very yeah. much. I'm gonna retreat <laughs> for now. Doesn't want to have to deal with a puppy, but this might be an overcommit here out of Misfits Academy. Look at how Fnatic Academy once again are closing in on them. Dreams already taken low. Niski caught out though, he's so low. Uses the Seraph shield, but gets melted away by Pride Stalker, as does Mr. Rales. Now amazing, it's up to him to 1v4, but he just can't do enough. Misfits Academy take out three members, and they'll get the Infernal Drake as well. Uh, Fnatic Academy, they were trying to collapse on two sides. The problem is all their damage was one side, and Amazing and Kikis were up on the top side, couldn't close the net fast enough, and suddenly, suddenly, Misfits Academy may very well have just done enough to hold on in this game. That's their third Drake of the game now, as that Infernal Drake was picked up. Still one more before the Elder Drake comes up though, and that's quite big here. Misfits Academy would have probably wanted to delay that Infernal just a little bit more to bring that power spike ever so slightly closer for themselves because they know if the Rise gets another item, he's looking towards Abyssal Scepter. If that Civic gets another item, it's going to be too difficult for them to fight into this team. And look at it, Niski caught out by Jin. Yuki had very clear target priority. Despite dying, was enough actually to set this fight up for the rest of Misfits. Amazing was so close on two members yeah. as well. He's, he's had such a strong game because we used to talk about him very much as a utility jungler. You know, he'd provide for his team, he'd help his team out. Here he's playing the Rengar, he's got the Yumus, he's got the Skirmisher <laughs> Saber. He is doing a huge amount of work. He has been involved in 17 out of 20 kills for his team. He's done a better job on this Rengar than I think a lot of people will give him credit for. It has been a messy game. Oh, incredibly really messy. Really messy. <laughs> when you're 28 minutes in and you have 34 kills on the board, yeah, you know it's been pretty messy. That'll do it. Um, which is a big departure from game one, where we thought, hey, Fnatic early game looked solid, looked clean. This game, not so much. Early game, we had that weird tower, uh, a tower dive where it was one for one. And Fnatic Academy haven't settled in the game since that. They've always been kind of rushing around the map, trying to get anything they can as fast as they possibly could. I think that's part of the situation they're in as a team and in the table at the moment as well, though, because both of these teams know they need to win this game to really have a chance of making it into playoffs. Misfits Academy play Schalke next week, and they Schalke are undefeated thus far, and we expect them to go undefeated in, throughout the entire split. If they don't win today, they are stuck on four points, and Fnatic Academy, if they win 2-0, push themselves to six. You can tell it's not desperation, but it's a realization from both of these two teams that if they don't win these games, it's a very real possibility. They won't have a chance at that LCS spot. Yeah, and th from the organization, from Fnatic, I mean, just looking at getting amazing on the lineup, of course, there were two weeks where he wasn't playing for Fnatic that they didn't put him on the Fnatic Academy lineup, and now Kikis goes in. Hexago to mate him, he just snipes away Yuki. That's great play by Kikis onto the back line once again. We saw him do it on Echo, now he's bringing it out on Camille. Trying to chase a Camille through the jungle, Misfits Academy now have to be careful that On The Hunt doesn't get popped, and the net collapses again. Kikis gonna push through on the bot side, the rest of Fnatic gonna look through mid lane here as well, maybe looking for the Baron, is it going to be a Realm Warp over there? I don't think you necessarily need to do that, but they were all grouped together. <laughs> no vision here for Misfits Academy either, so this Baron's going to go down pretty quickly without them understanding that it's being done. Right, Sucker's on his way, Void Assault is going to try and jump this. his way, and if he steals it, this is the play of the game. Misfits Academy need it, he jumps in, they stop it. Misfits Academy oh, against the stole. Baron! Bright Stalker takes it and kick is caught off towards the side as well. Round Warp in though, Fnatic get two, and they're going to continue the chase onto Jisoo. Mr. Rales chasing Dreams off towards the side. Fnatic, if they get these kills, they get the game, they'll take Jisoo as well. And now, with four members, they can push down mid and look for the win. Oh, Fnatic Academy, they botched the Baron. Oh. But it doesn't matter. Jesus right got a blast now. cone. Oh. He's actually going to escape for the time being. Rune Prison comes out amazing, looking for the flank. That's critical that the Misfits Academy get him away. The inhibit respawns in mid. I don't think Fnatic Academy have got enough time to push this through. They'll get the inhib again. They'll get the inhib again. They'll probably get top in. inhib as well. I don't know if they can push into the Baron, though. The Baron is incredibly powerful here, so they'll probably get two inhibs off this push. 
Yuki doesn't have Curse and Cool. Pride Stalker's up as well, though. Misfits Academy, Pride Stalker looking for the play once again. Edge of Night on Amazing. Battle Wars his way out, but Jisoo's got the flank on. Onto Clyde, he gets him out. Kickis jumps onto Pride Stalker, trying to trade back in, but Kickis now in the midst They're of desperate. four members of Misfits Academy. They're desperate stress, and desperate is costing them dearly here. Mr. Rales is dead. Misfits Academy have taken kill after kill after kill. Fnatic Academy have just been trying to overreach. Miski! Gets locked yeah. down. Miski's dead. That might be enough with a Baron buff for Misfits to even up the inhibitor. Remember, there's an exposed inhibitor in the bot lane if they can push it all through as well. So Misfits now have the Baron buff. They have 30 seconds on most of Fnatic Academy to push back through. And what has gone wrong this game for Fnatic Academy? Everything has looked so messy. Super minions in the mid lane mean this wave is quite a long way away, though, for Misfits Academy. They'll get one turret out of it. 10 seconds on Rollers, 10 on Kickers as well. Misfits probably aren't even going to get an inhibitor off this push. They might continue it, but I think they'll back away and go back for that dragon, which is spawning in about 40 seconds. Misfits didn't get as much as they would have wanted, but they're still in this game, which three minutes ago, it looked like Fnatic just had it on lock. It looked like they had everything in control. A couple more kills would spell the end of this game, Kickers. Oh no, if Kickis gets if caught out If he steps forward, here, there's a blast does he cone know? There. Have they seen it? No, they don't know. But has Kickis seen it? Because he's very patient about this. Look at where the rest of Fnatic oh, is going. Oh, he's not patient oh, Kikis. enough. Kickis caught out once again. Dreams gets the kill. And look where the rest of Fnatic Academy are. They're up through the top side of the map, trying to play the aggressors here. And they will be able to, but Another Drake comes up in six seconds. They're going to end up losing this one out to Misfits. Thing is, Cosq can just stay here and do this by himself. He doesn't need any of the rest of his team to do it. So the Drake will fall. It will be the Cloud. And next up will be that Elder Dragon. Misfits Academy will be very happy to get that with four Drakes under their belt. Fnatic. It looked like Amazing might have been going for something there with the Yumus. He decides against it for the time being. But it reeks of desperation, Stress. It reeks of desperation. It absolutely does. This was the desperate attempt to get a second inhibitor. They were not watching the recall or the respawn timers here. Amazing, way too low. Thinks that maybe, maybe he can stay alive for a moment longer. But, uh, I mean, Edge of Night's got, not going to keep you, the rest of your team safe there. And Fnatic ended up dropping. Kickers was slightly unfortunate as well because he Hexec ultimatumed on towards Pride Stalker as Pride Stalker leaped away, which meant he got carried a lot further into the back of the team than he would have <laughs> expected to. Uh, at the end of that, of course, we saw Niski getting caught out with the Miasma, stopping the Realm Warp. Uh, and now it's even. The gold is even. Don't look at the kills. Towers, obviously in favor of Fnatic Academy, but Misfits have an open inhibitor in bot lane. Their Poppy's getting to a point probably where he can trade with Kickers. And the big story is not on any of the overlay any of the stat lines here, it's the two Barons that Misfits Academy have had this game. One, they rushed down because Fnatic were out of position, and the second, they stole away. Fnatic tried to stop Baron damage at about 1,800, and I think between Yuki, with a bunch of damage coming from Curtain Call and some of the rest of the team, just bought Pride Stalker enough time to get that smite down. Amazing didn't react in time. We, we haven't had a replay of it, so unfortunately, we won't be able to break it down piece by piece, but for Misfits, that has been what saved them in this one. However, Fnatic have now got to those later game spikes we were talking about yep. in Pick and Ban. Infinity Edge, Essence Reaver, Last Whisper, Phantom Dancer, all completed on towards Mr. Rales. The Rise has a Morello, a Rod of Ages, a Void Stuff, a Seraphs, almost got that Abyssal Scepter as well. There's some big item spikes here for Fnatic Academy. And Fnatic Academy do not need Amazing to carry these fights anymore. They don't need Kigis to carry the fights. Rales will do it alone if he is given the room and given the support that he needs to. Four item Sivir is very deadly in late game team fights. Remember, right the way back in Champ Select Medic, we were talking about if this game goes past 35 minutes, it should be Fnatic Academies. Well, this game should have been Fnatic Academies probably about eight minutes ago when they were looking for those inhibitor plays, looking for the Baron. They theoretically had the setup should have been simple for them, but it hasn't been. It's been very messy, very sloppy play. And Fnatic Academy need to catch up. Misfits, though, are the kings of the late game in EU Challenger Series. Have the longest game time of any team. Have the most wins after 40 minutes of any team as well. They'll, they'll be comfortable in this position. Another question we were asking 
was could four misfits Jizu on this poppy maintain control against Kikis the later this game goes and for now it certainly looks like it I mean Kikis is shoving in and then Jizu is receiving the wave but apart from that Kikis doesn't seem to be extending much more than a CS lead right now it is a significant one um, can't really overlook that the CS lead as well for amazing 50 CS over that Kha'Zix and has been involved in a lot more plays only seven kills being participated in for Prize Stalker as opposed to the 19 for Amazing. He's playing as much as it's not a utility champion as such. He's still playing that utility role. He's still aiding and assisting his team. And if Misfits Academy can take oh, oh, on Rales. Prize Stalker jumps in. Rales is going to face down the curtain. Cool. Prize Stalker looking for something here. There is a flank available for Amazing, but Kickers just wants the turret in the bottom lane. Amazing. Off towards the side, chased away. Misfits are looking for that Baron vision. Prize Stalker jumps forward once again. Kikis is going to get that tower. He's going to push that through. The recall's coming through from Jizu, but it's not in time to save the tower. And Misfits can't commit to the Baron at this point. So, you know, it was a couple of ultimates, like a couple of summoners used from Fnatic to disengage that fight. But Misfits don't get anything. And now they only have two towers remaining on the map. Just those Nexus turrets between them and losing this game. And Fnatic once again oh, call this is for necessary. the Baron. This is not Pride necessary. Pride Stalker's there. Ward comes down. Control Ward's going to stop it out. Pride Stalker not looking for the steal. Surely. Here he jumps in a little bit early. 2,000 HP on the Baron. Pride Stalker in the back line. Kick is caught off towards the side. They're going to go for the fight. Fnatic are all low, but so are Misfits. Jisoo knocks him back. Yuki takes Rallis that line. Dead. Two members dead. Koskyu goes down as well, though. And now it's a 4v3. Amazing jumps in. Jisoo knocks him back and takes him out. Now Niski and Kick is get destroyed but it's a double for Niski before he goes down three members of misfits survive it's enough to get back and with long respawn timers it should be enough for misfits to maintain control of the baron pit kigis is going to try and heal himself up he doesn't want to have to back away he doesn't want to have to teleport back into this so he's just going to assume control of the vision it needs to kill the Rift Scuttler so that they can keep control of the vision because still 25 seconds left on Amazing. This is going to have to be a standout play from Kikis if he wants to kill anybody in this Baron pit. There's not a huge amount of damage in all honesty on It's going to be slow. They do have to taste their fear isolation from Prize Stalker. Kikis is looking forward with the tactical Rales sweep. is up. Kly is already on the way. He's a long way away, but he might be there before the Baron goes down. Kikis steps if, forward once again. If Kikis can get a massive Sheen proc as he jumps in. Onto Dreams, 3,000 HP on the Baron. Here's the Redemption trying to heal himself up. Baron down to 2,000 now as Price Talker looks for it once again. Kikis jumps in, and here's the Baron going low. Kikis takes out Dreams. The Baron does go out. The Hexagon made him stop Price Talker in his tracks. He was trying to leap away. Has to flash to try and live another day. He gets taken out, but now Koskyu opening Ooh. up. The twin bangs and the kill from the side. Amazing though, takes out Yuki, what is this game? This game is a ridiculous back and forth Baron attempt that has been so messy. But again, Misfits Academy have taken the third Baron this game and it has not been enough to hold on for now. Elder Drake is gonna go over to Fnatic Academy by the looks of things, but Jisoo and Koskyu are closing in. Koskyu is no flash. If he doesn't catch out Amazing, it basically spells the end of his life. Amazing is going to back away from it. And Fnatic Academy, that all started on a Baron call they did not have to make. They had already pulled Misfits back away from the Baron. They had vision control. And this was the Baron that Misfits went for. Kikis, he wasn't looking for a steal on this, but he's looking to clean up on the backside of the Baron. The only way he really would have been able to steal was if he'd have been able to get a big Trinity Force proc jumping in on this. You can see he goes in, trades onto Dreams, didn't quite get damage down and catches Pride Stalker with a beautiful ultimatum. But look at the damage that's going to come from Cars Q. No respect there out of Rallis and Kikis. They were desperately trying to kill Jizu and Pride Stalker over the wall. And back and forth this game goes. We're on an Elder Drake. Amazing's popped his ultimate. Kikis has his teleport. They want to fight again. This fight will end the game if Misfits can pull out a win. They still have Baron buff on a couple of members. I think it ends the game no matter which way it goes, assuming three or four members die from either team. Open inhibitors on the side of Misfits and the same on Fnatic. Amazing jumps in. Baron 
As the Elder Drake down low, Kick is looking for the flank here. Misfits try and get the knock away, but the Keeper's Verdict does not land. Kick is steps forward once again. They're going for the fight. Elder Drake down. 4,000. Oh. It's all good. It's a smite fight. Kickers tries to get onto the back line. Amazing now taking up the barrier. Kick is in with the hexagon of Matum. He's dead. And now it's a 4v5. And Misfits can Nobody. try and re engage. Straight in. Yuki dead. Clyde's going to go down as well. Niski has to make a 1v5 play. Amazing there. Up towards the side. Can't get in. Can't engage. Can't join the fray. He tries to jump on towards Yuki, but he's dead. Niski's dead. Fnatic are dead. And Misfits will take the win. They're going to tie this series, end the series 1 and 1, and stop the momentum of Fnatic Academy in its tracks. Fnatic Academy kept taking fights they did not need to, and nobody peeled for Rales. The late game carry. Kigis and Amazing continue to try and carry these team fights. Nobody kept the Sivir alive. The five item Sivir. And that's the end of the game. Misfits Academy, the kings of the late game, stamp their place for this one and one against Fnatic Academy. Oh, Fnatic Academy looked so good in game one, looked good at the beginning of game two, but Misfits Academy punishing them in late game fights. Every Baron in game two went to Misfits Academy, and there was no way.